So uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, very crucial subject, uh, empowering the workforce. And it's, uh, it's a topic that resonates very deeply with me and I'm sure with many of you as well. Uh, before we dive in, I would like to share a, a brief anecdote, you know, highlighting the importance of empowering work environments. So a few years back, I was at a company which was struggling for innovation. And, uh, you know, the environment was very uh, stagnant kinds. And a lot of talented employees felt that, you know, their ideas were not being heard. And then came a very inspirational CEO. He was known for cultivating a culture of empowerment. He started small, uh, encouraging people for open communication, encouraging junior employees to present their ideas, and basically being approachable for anything and everything. And uh, that was a remarkable difference. A uh, lot of employees who were hesitant to even come forward came alive in enthusiasm and a lot of innovative solutions started flowing in left, right and center. And I think that instance kind of validated my belief that when we empower our workforce, we unlock their potential and that leads to individual success as well as organizational success. So today uh, we have two really amazing leaders and HR experts here, Poonam and Nivedita. Uh, let's start a very interesting round of discussion on this subject, workforce empowerment. Uh, Nivedita, let me start with you. There are a lot of these studies which basically say that there is a strong linkage between uh, employee performance and the uh, investment that we make in learning and development, people development. In your experience, can you share some specific examples on what kind of tangible benefits have come out of these uh, investments? Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. I know it's a lunch time, but uh, we'll try to make it, uh, keep it short and on time and interesting. Uh, so definitely I agree with you. One thing what you say is spoke about the empowerment and how also, you know, learning and development has a direct ROI to your organization. Trust me, today's day when we speak about overhead cost, we speak about, uh, you know, uh, making bottom line, you know, uh, uh, more uh, lucrative or your revenue, a CEO will never, never, never allow you today's day to have a learning and development department, um, you know, which doesn't actually uh, contribute to the bottom line. Uh, I come from an organization where I manage almost 50,000 people across India. I have a team of 49 uh, L&D people and I have a team of almost 200 HR people, I lead them. First thing I say, my learning and development lady, uh, uh, I see to it as she's in the boardroom. When we discuss, at least in, once in a month, she's there with me, representing the learning and development because we, I'm in a service industry. If that is not, you know, uh, really not working with uh, the organization goal, then it doesn't have any meaning. I'll come to you very, uh, in a lot of examples I'll give, which maybe the audience will benefit by that, uh, it definitely increases your productivity. Uh, let's understand a software company, you know, which all of us understand, um, new software coder who joins them, okay, if they do not enhance the a person with their own working, they do not enhance the skill, how will the youngster will perform? So that has a direct you know, ROI, which talks about, uh, let's say software, forget about. In my organization, we have lots of key account manager. They manage our customers. If I really don't enhance them with their p &L skill, I will not get ready-made from the market wherein I'll get a person who knows people because he has to manage people. Uh, he has to understand the operation. He has to understand a p &L. He has to understand how your, um, you know, um, uh, bottom line should increase. He should understand how customer satisfaction brings you more business. I need to invest on that person. And we have very clear key account manager program which goes for a three months and it's a blended learning program. Um, they have to have the certification. Otherwise he cannot be a key account manager. So I invest three months to become a key, uh, key account manager because he is the face for us. If he doesn't understand and bring the customer and we have a lot of NPS, you know, our business runs with NPS core. So 
that's one thing. Second, uh, I feel the skill enhancement uh, will directly, uh, you know, uh, it relates to your business. You know, you really will see a revenue increasing the moment all this happens. I'll talk about innovation also, you know, it brings innovation, you know, my organization again, we need to be very innovative. We have a design thinking learning for all the mid-level managers. How do we create innovation, innovative culture? People need to think, bring new things to their lives. So we decided that we need to have our mid-level manager need to go through a design thinking learning. So I can speak on and on, but there are a lot of direct, uh, you know, uh, ROI, um, gone those days when we are thinking, you know, how many days somebody has learned. I'm sure all the learning development colleagues will agree. Nobody now checks the man days, man hours. We just say certification, we say what is happening. So things have changed over a period of time. Yeah. That's brilliant. I think a lot of these examples, there is definitely a business case, not just for technical skills, but enabling skills, business skills, life skills. And I think we've, we've seen the uh, evidence yeah. in your organization and many others, the case for investment in people development. Coming to you, Poonam, uh, how can these learning and development programs help attract the right talent? All right, as I was listening to Nivedita, I was kind of reflecting. Hope all of us as HR professionals had something from the movie Matrix, where you know, put in a plug and everything gets downloaded and the person is ready, productive in day one or day two. Now that's of course uh, artificial reality, so we don't have it and that's what, that's what we try to do. But coming to why we are looking at and when once we download it, we make the person ready, person has spent a couple of uh, years, two to three years, they feel this is repetitive for me, so why, why should I continue doing it? So that whole thing of how do you retain the person or you risk losing the person to the, this thing. And as I've been in talent acquisition, one of the things which I hear from hiring managers, I need a ready person who can kind of get running, hit the ground from tomorrow. So how do you kind of get the hit the ground from tomorrow kind of people? So, so there is, uh, that's why the learning and development, yes, it's always a risk. Whether it helps you in retention, not so sure, but definitely helps you in upskilling and reskilling, and that is what is needed in the current scenario. What has changed post pandemic is earlier, of course, people were okay to kind of get trained once a year or whatever, but because uh, in the pandemic, a lot of companies focused on these and a lot of platforms, learning platforms have come. One of the things that has changed is they want these training programs on the go. So how many apps can you offer? How can you ensure that a person, so everybody has a different learning capacity. Some people spend maybe half an hour in the morning, some people spend uh, half an hour at night. They, everybody wants their own time when they want to learn. So yes, there are various platforms that are there. And if a company offers them, that is an attractive tool. But uh, not everybody can invest in the technology because the earlier panel said, how much can you invest in technology is finally the revenues that you bring in is all dependent on that and a per person cost on learning and development, that's also something each company has to take their own, this thing. But times have changed. What we at Adhita Villa believe is the 70, 20, 10. 70% 70 is learning on the job. Whether in office or hybrid, it's the transfer of knowledge that happens from the line manager. In, uh, like a speaker previously said, line manager is responsible for your mental well-being. Line manager is also responsible whether you get to attend a learning program or not, they'd make that decision for you. So while you may be very cu curious and wanting to learn, but whether you get to attend it or not, the line manager makes a decision. So how do you kind of ensure that line managers have that coaching mindset becomes very important for us. And that's what one of the things we look for when we are hiring people as to the managers, how much people centric are there or if they're just number driven and what it is. So, so these are softer skills. So yes, there is the product talk technology, of course we can kind of download in a day or two functional skills we can download, but the softer skills, how do you make them? How do you get the team inclusive? Those have to be done more in one-on-one -on -one interactions and there are no courses that you can attend for three days and tomorrow become a coach. 
while you can uh, get some sort of a skills to analyze people's behavior, but you cannot become a coach. And for that, you need practice. And that practice actually comes from the 70%. And that's what we look for when we are looking at people. One is learning agility. One is how do they interact with people. And that's what they carry forward. And that's what we give them as a gift, even when they move out. It's not just always a retention, but while they are there, they are creating a good culture for the organization. And when they move out, they, they take the good behavior with them. That's very interesting. I've heard this for the first time, 70, 20, 10. And it's so true, actually, because a lot of it we learn on the job. And that kind of emphasizes the importance of training the trainers. You know, learning is required at all levels. I think we have to be lifelong learners at whatever stage of our careers we are at. Uh, so we do have a diverse workforce at all levels. So Nivedita, you know, while online training platforms, as Poonam mentioned, are gaining traction, there is also a view that physical classrooms, you know, uh, drive a far deeper engagement, of better learning and more networking opportunities. So in your vision uh, as the future of LND, how do you think both these platforms will blend, you know, the physical classrooms as well as the online platforms? Yeah. It has to be a blended learning, and I think we have accepted that. I'm sure all of you will agree. This is that we have accepted, and the millennials, you know, who are on the, now they're getting into the mid-level uh, job. They are the one who will be uh, next two, three years, will be maybe a few of them will be the CEOs. Uh, so this is already in the system, the blended learning. Uh, and it has got uh, a lot of, uh, you know, positivity. You know, one really, uh, first thing is the flexibility what one gets. Mm, I'll talk about the one program which I spoke, the key account manager. These guys are all over India. They are based. They are not based at a uh, based at single you know location. And the, usually the you know the person who teaches them is in Singapore because uh, or from Denmark because we are a European company. They come and train them. Look at the cost. Mm -hmm. We're looking at somebody coming from all the way and uh, 20 people coming together and getting a certification on this. We have changed that. Till uh, before pandemic used to do that, now we have absolutely changed. The trainer comes for two days because I have to take a cost, right? And people enjoy because they get a flexibility of doing few courses on their own, on their own time. Uh, I'll give an example. Um, one of my previous organization, we had uh, retail, I was heading HR for a retail organization. We hired 100 IM graduates, okay? First time, we said, no, let's invest on people. Even uh, the MD, the CEO, they also thought, you know, people should. Retail had never seen IM graduates coming in. We said, no, we must uh, have IM graduates. Suddenly one day, and my office, I remember, used to be a center of the whole floor. Suddenly I see one person, and it was a glass door, and we are very open culture. The one youngster whom I had actually gone to the campus and got it. He just, you know, loitering around. So I went out, I said, Ashish, what's happening? He said, no, Nivedita, you are in the middle of meetings I've seen, uh, but I want to just come and meet you. So I said, come now, we, I'm going for lunch. Why don't we have lunch together? So he just came. He says, Nivedita, this induction is for 20 days. I don't have patience. I said, you have to go. I said, where have you been put up? He said, I'm in the category team. And category team, first of all, uh, the I'm graduates thing, when they come, they immediately they'll be given a buyer's role. In retail, I'm sure you'll all know, they don't get a buyer's, buyer's role. They thought, we'll go to China, we'll go to you know, this place uh, and uh, start you know, buying. So first of all, he was very unhappy that he has to learn how to make a PO, how to make a GRN, and that's the starting. He says, I'm very dissatisfied the role I do, and 20 days, already 10 days, I think I will leave and go. You know, that hit me so badly. I said, I called the, you know, LND head. I said, we must do something. He says, Nivedita, we can't do it, it's 10 days. I said, no, you need to think through how to make it a blended learning. How come we never thought about it? I'm talking about 2016, okay? How we never thought about it that these are youngsters cannot sit in this room the way you all are here. <laughs> I'm sure all of, many of you are youngsters here. They, they, they are not. So we need to think. That actually hit me very badly. I said, no, let's think of getting these people. You have LMS system. You have this think how we can do it. 
So what was Saturday, Sunday, I called the entire team. I was there. We did a brainstorming. We called the operation guys. I said, from Monday, we are changing this whole program. So this is what, you know, it tells you that you need to be updated. As a learning head, you need to be updated. As a CHR, you need to be updated what is happening around. And blended learning actually makes you to think. When you want to teach collaboration, you can still teach, uh, you know, virtually. There's so many games are coming in, you know, you can do that virtual games, you can have lot of, uh, you know, but when you want people to learn the interpersonal skills, get them to a room like this and have some simulations or any kind, you just can't have only online, I'm a, you know, big believer of a online program. But when there is a mandatory training programs, like in my organization, I have six mandatory programs every year you have to complete. That's your code of conduct, your ethics. You have to, otherwise you, are, you don't get appraisal, by the way. So it's a February month, this is the month is going on. So I made it, you need to do it. So these are mandatory, make it online. But when it comes to your collaboration, you can make it, give people to think. Six Sigma, okay, you don't have to do a, uh, you know, getting people on a, please do it at school, you know, create a university. And trust me, we have in our system, we have a uh, program where people have to, actually it gives you a thing that you are getting enrolled in a university, then the boss gets a email that your, you know, employee has got into university, she accepts, and how much she has studied, the boss gets a, actually it gives you a feeling of a university, which makes it more interesting. So I think this is what I would suggest it has to be blended. It's a lot of, it's a very practical way of teaching. Yeah. Very interesting uh, point you made, Nivedita. The keen interest that candidates have to take, right? A lot of times trainings become a tick the box exercise. Yeah. And I think by bringing in this blend, you're catering to a diverse workforce. There are some who would still prefer physical classrooms and there are many, especially from the Gen Z generation who would want a blend uh, depending on what kind of training it is. Uh, that kind of takes me to next question and maybe I'll ask you uh, Poonam first that beyond these traditional learning methods, you know, there are a lot of these new innovative approaches like a skill lab or a mentoring program and a lot of gamification. When you uh, attract talent or when you take interviews, have you ever uh, experienced where candidates are actually asking for these unconventional methods or, you know, for training and development that suits their requirements? Uh, so for us uh, at Aditya Birla, it was almost like six, seven years back for our onboarding, which is actually pre-onboarding. Once a person accepts the offer, how do you keep the candidate engaged? And that's where we have this online tool. It's a, a platform where you, in a gamified manner, you learn about the company, the culture, the values, purpose, everything, as you unlock each level. And of course, you get some points for you to kind of complete. So the whole program is for you to complete in 15 days before you join. So because we understand that you can't make the person sit in the room, like what she was saying, for two days and just say, OK, the, there's so much about the company that you need to do, know about it. So we have kind of provided that. We give issue that uh, 15 days before the person joins. Every day the person can spend an hour whenever as per their convenience. It's an online platform. They learn, complete one level, answer some questions, go to the next level. So yes, that, that has helped. The best part is we actually come to know which, whether the candidate is joining our organization or not. <laughs> because if they are not logging in and they're not curious enough, that means there is something wrong. So it's a red flag also for us to watch out for. So yeah, the so technology helps us in those uh, little things, but that's what we do. A lot of, uh, at a senior level, candidates ask, and, uh, and since we ha are a conglomerate, we have almost 20 lines of businesses, we actually, people move from one sector to another. So it's not about if you want to change a job, you have to look for another organization. We have our internal platform also. And people, once they've completed a course, actually start applying uh, to other opportunities within uh, the group itself. And that helps. And we, uh, we as, as recruiters, as, as HR, we can see how many courses the person has completed. And apart from that, uh, 
We have internally for internal applicants other tools. One is of course the internal mobility which I said the IJP. Secondly, we have Prozon which is more about uh, doing a project. In the, for example, if I have, want to improve my finance skills, I can take up a project with the finance team. So while there will be a few finance professionals, but it will help me also to improve my this thing. So that's the 20% that we are talking about in the 70-20 where you learn by doing things which will be completely unrelated and you learn from peers. You are not learning from a manager or whatever, but it's more for, for your interest, you learn from peers. And in fact, a peer learning is a very important tool where you actually, it's your own interest, you want to learn it and that's why you are going and we have found much higher successes and people wanting to come again and again for peer learning than if you want, make them sit in a classroom. So our classroom is only that 10 percent that uh, is left because that's once or twice a year. It's not and those are the mandates that we are talking but the learning hours is across whether you do a peer learning or whether you do uh, uh, learning with the manager. Manager brings, well yes you can give a product knowledge to a person from a manager perspective but what are the experiences in the uh, market? Those are experiences which only manager can download as to what a person should do in a situation A, B or C or D. Everything cannot be put into a module and taught to the person and these are conversations that have to be had in a room. So yeah, there, there are multiple ways of learning and as a group we are kind of offering all of them uh, to a person uh, and it's their choice what, what they take up. I think uh, simulation is on the new way of learning. Um, you know, I think uh, if you want to really leave a message, that's the right way. I really uh, big believer on that. Any leadership conference, I try to get some kind of simulation, maybe a business simulation or a strategy. You know, I try to get it in, uh, because first of all, they enjoy. And you need to enjoy, you need to learn. And many things you cannot teach. For example, somebody wants to fly, you cannot just teach the person. You need to get your simulator and uh, learn flying. Uh, otherwise, you cannot uh, um, defense people. They don't have any um, war bringing in. They will create simulation how to, um, you know, understand the enemy's behavior. So simulation is a very old age, uh, you know, practice. It's not very new. But off late in corporate, I see that taking the front seat, if you ask me, uh, you want to teach people strategy, you know, how to think and also bringing the best out of them. They, because they don't understand actually and that observation of a, a trainer and you really know people how they think in a simulation. I'm sure all of you will agree, right? Simulation is something I'm sure all of you, how many of you have attended any, uh, you know, learning with, um, I can see a few hands there. I think it's, it's very accepted, right? Um, even your people will say, let's have something like that. Maybe, the, you know, I feel let's start with that. You know, learning to make it interesting, certain learning you have to give. That is your proper functional skills. You cannot, you have to teach them, the way I said a coder. But to grade them to a learning, you know, mindset or creating a learning organization, you need to think very innovative how to bring people on board and let's understand today's day, I really don't feel people stay because of learning. They remember the organization because of the learning. They don't stay. Let's accept these are hard facts. If somebody says ROI of a learning and development, you can retain people. I fully disagree that you cannot. But they go back, they are the big promoters of your organization, thinking that, you know, the, I learned the best in that organization. I'm sure you would have come across this statement. This is a big brand value you are creating. It's not retaining people. They will get engaged, but they will go with a very good note and all the more chances for Poonam to rehire them. So I, I think that's a big takeaway for me, a good learning and development program. I think that in itself is a huge benefit. You know, yeah. You're creating a great brand. You are upskilling people when they're working. Yeah. And when they leave, you have the opportunity to rehire them. Yeah, so that's absolutely. that's kind of brilliant. Yeah. And I think in this dynamic environment, uh, real life solving real life problems uh, is very critical. And I think these simulated yeah. case studies, absolutely. most of our you know institutes, credible institutes like the Harvards and the ISBs and yeah. Stanford's of the world focus on case study based learning. Uh, so Nivedita, in your experience, have you actually seen the true benefits of 
uh, these kind of learnings where, uh, you know, employees are able to solve real life problems in a better manner and, you know, are able to kind of um, take this, yeah. uh, take this away f in their practical application. So, what we have done, I told you that our mid-management actually they go through uh, a design thinking, right? So, what we do is, we don't uh, leave it there. So, we give them an actual case, okay? And this is also in my other program. So, we give them a case study and they have to solve it. So, that's also almost a cross-functional training what we say. The person has to go and find the solutions based on what we go through today's day because most of my people are with the client and every day trust me there is a problem statement comes up for us every day you know how to deal with situations so we learn from our mistakes we uh, this design thinking workshop started with that thought Ki can we learn from our own case studies which become people start thinking Otherwise, the operation guys, you know, they just go to the office, they, you know, do the day-to-day -day thing. They really don't think at all. So, we made it a mandatory thing that the mid-management will go for a design thinking. They have to solve cases. With this, they also understand the other functions, how they operate. You know, you need to have sympathy, empathy for other functions. Particularly PNC, you know, we call as a people and culture. You know, they'll say, PNC doesn't give me people. PNC doesn't train people. How, do you know how? And the, the, my people will say, operation doesn't understand our issues. So we have actually a lot of case studies we run through this design thinking workshops. Great. Uh, in the interest of time, I think I'll ask one last question and maybe both of you can answer. Uh, Poonam, first to you. How can collaboration between a learning and development team and a talent acquisition team uh, help, you know, in designing a much better talent uh, management strategy, both attraction as well as retention? So, it is uh, actually a collaboration because when you are out hiring, you know what are the skill sets you are looking for and what is the skill set the market has. So, there is always an opportunity for you to kind of find out what could be possible future training needs that we should be preparing for and which are the skills which are difficult to attract and we should be kind of focusing on upskilling internally on those. Uh, once you have hired a person, during the assessment you have anyway found out what are his or her development areas. So, you give that wow experience by putting, taking the person, okay, these are the areas that you need to start working on from uh, the first month itself and you start uh, adding value to the person so the people feel, wow, okay, it's not like you've completed two years and then you are thinking about, okay, what's your training need? Yeah. But you already have a training need identified through your hiring process. You put it in the system. There's a wow experience for the person in the first year. And of course, what are the future skills that we have to hire for that and upskill for internally? Those, those, it's kind of input into the system. So that's what I feel. Absolutely. It's a collaboration completely. No, I think the TM strategy is actually made between this recruiters and the learning and development. The TM person should get these people on board and uh, let's talk about how do you create an assessment center. You know, the talent development department will create an assessment center. How do you create? What kind of skill? It's actually you need to bring them together to create assessment center. How do we get a uh, person from, you know, the skill set what Poonam was speaking. Also, uh, I feel um, the learning and development people, you know, um, they, if they want to really excel, they need to work with the TA team. Absolutely. They need to understand what, because the TA team goes and, uh, uh, let's see the process, goes and discusses with the, you know, the functions, what kind of person they need. They're the first learning and development person doesn't go, so, but... The development is with them, right? So I feel the if they start spending time, which uh, you know, I in wherever I work, I tell them, please sit with the TA team. They understand the market. They understand what kind of skill set is available. They also understand if the skills are A, B, C, this person has A, B, the C can be developed. So there comes the talent management person to pick that C and build 
So L&D people, please, my request to all of you, spend as much time with your TA team. It's very important for all of you to understand the requirement of your skill set in your organization. Whether in, the, in a growing organization, you really need to update yourself. Unfortunately, they are all intelligent people, all the L&D people. They are all intelligent, but they read a lot. They understand the behavior than, better than anyone else. A talent acquisition person will not understand that. But you need to pick up those clues. And the TM person is the person who actually play that role. And if you do not have that in your organization, you cannot build competencies. You cannot skill your people. And you cannot make a future-ready organization. Yeah. Brilliant. Like any other field, collaboration is key yeah. to success. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the message is loud and clear. Investment in the most important asset, which is people, people development, leads to innovation, drives growth, and creates fulfilling environments and thriving organizations with people at the forefront. Thank you very much, Poonam Thank you. and Nivedita. It's been a great set.